Jason, um, here we are again talking about an, another tragedy. There's going to be a lot of politicizing of this because now it's, it's shooting and go. The politics starts right away. It shouldn't, but that's where we're going to be going. Uh, your reaction after hearing about another tragedy in an elementary school? My reaction is obviously prayers are with the families who have been impacted and a community that is obviously going to be mourning and this whole country will be mourning. I agree with you that unfortunately a lot of folks on frankly both sides of this issue do have a tendency to get political. And I think we have to make sure that we don't fall into this trap. I have a general rule for, for me and my radio show, for example, where on any of these kinds of tragedies, I'm not going to get into the politics the day of, mostly because we've got people who are in pain and they don't need to be put into the middle of political drama. But beyond that, we just don't have all of the details yet. We don't know the details in this case. It sounds like, based on some of the reporting and what we're hearing, is that this was an incident that started outside of the school and a family member was first shot by this 18-year-old suspect. It then got into the school. We don't know if it was targeted. We also don't know how he got this handgun. So I think there are so many questions that do need to first be answered, and then we can have a conversation about the politics or the policies around gun rights and who this person was. Is there mental illness involved? Is this a criminal who should not have had his hands on guns? We just don't have those details yet. And I feel like, you know, this Twitter world basically has forced us into or, or gives the oh. perception of forcing us into that kind of politics. The late, great Rush Limbaugh uh, aptly called Twitter as it's currently being administered a sewer. And it is. It's a, it's a left-wing sewer where all uh, primarily leftists go and spew this vile nonsense. But the politics aside, there are concrete things we could be discussing to make sure that soft targets in our society, and I'm thinking primarily of our kids, no matter what the circumstances are, are not put in danger like this in the future. I've, I've been bringing up a past shooting that happened here in Texas, and because this is not going to be any surprise to you, Jason, because of politics, the, the common sense steps that should have been taken weren't taken here in the state of Texas, and they're not being taken in your state, I'm sure, and around this, around this country because of politics. But, for example, redirecting traffic in our schools so you have one, one entry point. Lockdown mm -hmm. rehearsals and provisions. Arming teachers. There is, there is one school district in Texas that I know of, actually a couple of them in Texas that I know of, who advertise out front, our teachers are armed and our teachers will defend our students. Period. End of sentence. A nice, clear message to would-be crazy people, hey, you're going to meet resistance. There's also having uh, a police presence which shouldn't be controversial, but it is because of our political opponents, having a police presence on these schools or former military or former police officers who are all too willing to stand a post. What do you think about all those ideas that because of politics never get a fair hearing? Yeah, I think generally speaking, we have to have the conversation of where do we find that balance? We don't obviously want to go into the world of having a school feel like a prison. We want to make sure that we're doing what we can to make the kids safe while also not freaking them out because of everything that's happening to protect them. So that's step number one. I agree with you wholeheartedly that we have to do a better job of treating these soft targets. And they're not just schools, of course. We have soft targets all over the place. I am in an office not far from the Space Needle. That is a soft target. We have to understand that policing is a big part of the answer. We need to have police departments that are staffed so that they can proactively police. We have to have judges who will put criminals actually in jail when it's warranted. We have to have prosecutors who go hard after the folks who are committing these crimes. And those are just the general issues. But the truth of the matter is, and I know that this is not the best message for some folks to hear, particularly parents, the truth is we have crazy people out there. Things can happen. And we have to make sure that all of us are setting up systems, setting up policies that make it so that if, God forbid, this were to happen again, we have mitigation strategies at work to minimize the damage as best as humanly possible. That is a difficult message for a lot of folks to hear. And I wish that that were not the case. But we live in a reality in which crazy people sometimes do crazy things. Violent people do violent things. 
there is a place to have a conversation about the policies and politics around gun control. There absolutely is. I don't know how this individual got the gun. I don't know if it was legal. I don't know if it was stolen. We should have that conversation, and conservatives have to step up and have that conversation, too, and not be reluctant to. But I do think that there are steps that we can take, to your point, that can mitigate the possible damage that ends up getting done. Now, mitigating the damage, not even mitigate. How about prevention? How about prevention? And the idea of disarming an entire population and leaving the criminals armed, in my, in my view, is not a solution. Jason Rance, thank you very much. Appreciate the time.